Yesterday we held uh, a debate at the African Leadership University, which is a, a five-minute walk uh, across at Kigali Heights, which I, I recommend uh, uh, heartily as an institution. In fact, some of its uh, esteemed members are, are with us here today. Um, one of the, the phrases that kept on coming up yesterday was uh, dictator's club. Uh, but I'd like to call up to the podium, if I may, uh, Musa Sharif, uh, who's a student uh, at the African Leadership uh, Union. Now, this was a, a brutal you know, television reality show contest we had with four competing debate teams who you know, tore chunks out of each other uh, all afternoon. Uh, Musa was the, the last man standing. Um, now, uh, uh, <laughs> um, you know, there, there are many arguments about how we get to uh, African Union. Some people think, you know, a political route, we should sort out the politics. Some people say, you know, let's uh, do it with small, you know, economic steps first. Um, but yesterday you were making the point that maybe there's something else that we should be fixing first before we even get there. Can you, can you explain a bit what, what you meant by that? Yes, um, good afternoon. So like you heard, my name is Musa Sharif and I'm from Liberia first and from the African Leadership University second, um, an institution that is pioneering a French dimensional approach to 21st century education in Africa. So for me, um, I respect the view of all of the panelists. These are serious academicians and thinkers. So allow me to give my student perspective. So from, from, from what we've been taught at the African Leadership University, my belief is that neither politics or no, neither the political side or economic side or whatever, the, the, the priority and the focus should rather be instead of the African Union now, it should and that goes to the policy makers and stakeholders and leaders. We all should focus on a new dimensional approach. And that new dimensional approach is to allow individual African states or country to first and foremost invest in themselves. Such investment should cut across the decolonization of the educational model of our educational institutions in Africa, the prioritization of the affairs of the youth in each of these individual African countries, and the overall economic development of our countries. So rather than focusing on the necessity of the African Union at this time, allow the individual African countries to build themselves as the beginning as a foundation. The reason is that regardless of any policy you'll make here at the convention center or the headquarters that was built completely 100% by China in Addis Ababa, <laughs> regardless of whatever policy you do, once it does not align with the individual or domestic policies of individual African countries, it is fruitless and it is going nowhere. And that is why we are here today after, six, after, after 50 to 60 years of existence, from the AU, from the OAU in 1963 to the AU today in 2018. So that is my perspective. Allow the individual African countries to invest in their own development first. When they achieve certain level of development, then you take them to another level. If you allow me to share my idea on that level, I can stay. So <laughs> start it up with allowing the individual countries to invest in themselves. Then you go to the regional level, ECOWAS, SADC, and all of these people, and invest in them. Let me take you back to the, African, to the level of the African, African countries. I mentioned of the decolonization of the curriculum of Africa. 
build all of the infrastructures, build all of the skyscrapers like where we are. If you do not build the perspectives in the minds of the youth, you are building nothing. So essentially this is, um, you're, you're saying it's a question of sequencing and everyone wants to rush to union now but actually focus on you know, putting out the fires which are burning in individual countries first, then we can move on uh, to regional organizations and eventually a continental sized uh, uh, organization? Exactly, that's what I'm saying. So for instance, when individual African countries invest in education, invest in institutions such as the African Leadership University. Where, for instance, where, for instance, education is decolonized and it is a requirement, part of your degree program, to study a course called the African Core. The African Core allows you to learn about Africa and build the sense of belonging, what we call the sense of Pan-Africanism. Then when you do that, when you build that, you live from there. You go to the regional level. And I like what uh, Najala said. This whole idea of statism owes itself to the solution the Europeans uh, uh, find. If I'm not mistaken, that was 1649 at the Treaty of Westphalia. That is what they are borrowing. Right. So de-emphasize your focus on all of these things. Emphasize your focus on the individual growth of the countries. Then go to the regional level. Equip the echoes and make sure it achieves all of its goal. For instance, the goal of a single currency. To have a common continental currency, begin with regional currencies first. Let West Africa have an inter and intra trade with a single currency. The Southern African region, the Northern African region, collectively when these people have achieved their single goal through a multi-dimensional approach, then we can talk of the African Union. Anything other than that, our African policymakers will still go in Addis Ababa and debate and debate and debate and will still come back here and talk of the same thing. Thank you. <laughs> if there was one single thing the AU could do tomorrow that would uh, make your generation sit up and think, oh, okay, maybe we should listen to these old geezers. If there was one single thing they could do, what would that be? If there's one single thing, yeah. is to invest in education. Tanjala said something, and I'll build on that. According to the International Organization of Migration in the United Nations, of course, every year, nothing less than 2,000 young, black, energetic, and aspiring African youth die in the Mediterranean Sea. Why? Because they, most of them, are incapacitated to find jobs that they can sustain themselves and sustain their family. So how, my suggestion is, if there's any single thing the African Union will do tomorrow, after here, is to invest in education and reinvent education as the African Leadership University is doing it. Fantastic. The reason is that when you invest in education, you are empowering the next leaders who will take after Mr. Mo Ibrahim, who will take after Mr. Kagami. You will build the capacity to be able to maintain your legacy and build on it and move forward with their collective aspiration. Again, anything other than investing in education and reinventing it as we are doing at the African Leadership University, we are going nowhere. Thank you. Round of applause. Thanks very much. Thanks. Thank you. Musa Sharif uh, representing the ALU.